Hey, everybody, we are live. We are live. You can see a little bit uh, of this, this phone where I'm live on TikTok, I'm live on Instagram, I'm live on YouTube and Facebook and um, Twitter. So there I am. Let me know if you're out there, who's out there, where you're from, looking for comments. I am looking for, this is um like, this isn't my last live ever. This is my last live of our birthday celebration because tonight at midnight, we close down our um, celebration party. So all of our, our courses, the registration for all of our courses closed tonight. So I see some people are coming on on, on uh, Instagram and on TikTok. Instagram, you're, you're flying. You got 61 people on Instagram. From Vermont, from North, uh, North Carolina, Indiana. Hey guys, my American friends. Question I have for you. This came about because of a, um, a, a post that I saw on social media today. Elmville, Ontario. Oh, I love Elmville. Uh, I used to, I used to sell pharmaceuticals up there. So uh, I think Swagger really loves Elmville as well. From Virginia. Oh my gosh. About to get our first puppy. I am so excited for you. Okay. Here's my question. Do you ever get completely frustrated? Uh, like, do your dogs ever completely frustrate or overwhelm you? New Zealand is represented right now. First Quebec. <laughs> Swagger's like watching me. Watch this. Every time I do this, I make the heart. He, oh, he's, he, he let me down on that one. Do your dogs ever completely, and be honest, we're, we're amongst friends here. Complete safety. No judgment. Watching on YouTube. Hey, Margaret, do you ever get, because I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. Last week, I actually called uh, Swagger, or not Swagger. Swagger's perfect. I actually called the Bulldog a couple of choice names. Um, it happened at 6 a.m. I had I had COVID last week. I was just getting over it. So I, I normally would be up by 6. He never wants to get out of bed. And um, he, he was like at the front door scratching. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so unusual. Yeah, I thought he had a poop. No, he had to go visit. I don't know who he had appointments. He didn't let me know about, but I was calling him some choice names. So totally. Yes. Yes. Totally. Um, the person I think who started it, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm reading between the lines. She had a migraine and her dogs were driving us nuts. Oh, Hilton head. K. Nice. Um, and she said her dogs were being complete jerks and, um, so there's two questions that I have for you here. What, like, do they, do you ever get frustrated or over completely like what kind of aliens do I have in my home moments? And what is the aftermath? Like, let me, like, how do you feel? What goes through your head afterwards? What goes through your head afterwards? That's what I want to know. And then I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, you guys leave your comments and because I'm going to share with you how I think you can combat that. How I'm going to share how I combat and it works a hundred percent for me. So I'm hoping it will work for you. So what it does is it makes me reframe what happened and it also helps me to, um, so that it rarely happens. Like honestly, it rarely happens with me that I ever really feel completely frustrated. Lisa, I'm sending you a heart because guess what? There are times that we've, we aren't getting the outcomes we expect that, that, you know, we feel like, man, is this ever going to go right? So please don't take on the persona. You aren't a failure. You failed at something you were attempting to do. Guess what? I had a colossal F up on Saturday, like colossal for me. It was colossal. Maybe I'll tell you about it later. You with, uh, it was during a training session. I'm I've got, I've got it all on video cause I video everything. I, and I'm, I might put it together for social media. Okay. So, uh, Anne said, I really feel like I failed afterwards. So it's, it's the, it's 
Do you ever get overwhelmed? And then what happens after? Okay, here on TikTok, Carol says, I have several dogs growing up and, they're, and they've all overwhelmed me at times due to sensory and control issues. Afterwards, I look in their eyes and say, you're the type of dog I wanted. You're the dog I wanted. Oh, Christina, I'm sending you hearts, girl. Uh, Lisa from Instagram. I feel a ton better now. I just take better care of myself in general. So here's what I know for me with when, when I was, when I like had like that much patience with Tater over the past week, like, like last the week before, like a little, when I was sick, when I was just getting better, I was sick. I mean, I was sick with COVID and then I got this lovely COVID rash. And so I had histamine releases. I was, I was a mess. I was not, I was not feeling my best. I was still tired, sleeping 12 to 14 hours every day. And so all of these things, it was easy to trigger a little bit of anxiety in me. So two things I want to share with you. We all like, especially you guys with kids, kids, or you have a full-time job and kids, or you have, you know, responsibility of, of your parents or other family members, um, your own, your own business right now we're in a recession, like, you know, all these plates are in the air. So then the, then what happens we have certain expectations of the people in our lives, of ourselves, of the dogs in our lives. And frustration happens and, or overwhelm happens when our, the, the reality of the day doesn't meet the expectations we have of the people or the animals in it. And so when I feel like that, there's two things that I do, and I hope this will help you. I ask myself, what were my expectations? And if you guys believe, and if you're on my live, there's a very good chance you might. I'm really sorry, um, your name, reverse mortgage advisor, that your husband's in the hospital. I'm sending you a big heart. Um, I, I reframe what went on. And if you believe like, like I do, that our dogs are always doing the best they can with the education we've given them. We've given them the education. So you may have a rescue dog. I know right now there's a lot of people with reactive dogs, reactive to children, reactive to other dogs, maybe even reactive to you on varying degrees. So, you know, a couple to he's on meds and they still don't think that they can help him. Right. So varying degrees of reactivity. And but here's Susan pompous ass Garrett saying, the dog's always doing the best they can with the education I've given them. Then that makes me feel like a real jerk, Susan. Like, thanks. You're doing the best you can with the education and experience you have so far with the reactive dog that you have now. I am not saying that that dog would be better somewhere else. I am not saying that anybody else could do a better job. I'm saying with your experience and your education, you're doing the best you can. And with the education you've given your dog and the experience maybe that came before if he was a rescue, your dog's doing their best. And so knowing that helps me, even though I don't think Tater pissing off into the forest in the field at 6 a.m. was his best. I recognize it was. When was the last time you trained him, Susan? Well, I've been sick for two weeks. So no, I haven't trained him at all. So what is my relationship with him? Is it, is it, I mean, what stress was he feeling being in the house with me never getting off the couch? Because he acts like, you know, the, the frontal bulldog face looks like he, he, he constantly has the resting, I don't give a shit face, but he is a very sensitive dog. Okay. So when you can, when you feel there that you're, you're overwhelmed, know you're human. <laughs> We're, we all get to that point, but recognize that the dogs are really doing the best they can with the education, the training, the experience they have with us in the environment that we're putting them in right now. And I think for me, that helps me to cut my dogs some slack. And that helps me to look back at what happened 
And I mean, I immediately on, um, after la last week, when I started to feel better, it was really Wednesday night before I started feeling any better. Then I started a plan for Tater and I've been training him every day since. All right. So connecting with him because we have a 15 week old puppy. I have a uh, border collie that's not yet two who has, you know, we have so much work ahead of us and Tater wasn't meant to be my dog. He was meant to be, well, Kim and I adopted him thinking we would rehome him. And then Kim fell in love with him and he was going to be her dog. But he ends up being my dog because Kim's dog back at home doesn't get along with him. And so he's mostly my dog. And so, you know, it, he gets like, you know, fourth fiddle because my three dogs before that I have training plans for. So it's unfortunate. And I've got to respect that. That's the relationship that I have with him. Our dogs are doing the best they can. And when you believe that, I find I don't lose my temper as much at all. Every single night I go to bed. I have two dogs that sleep in my bedroom. And um, sometimes I only have one. But normally I have two dogs that sleep in my bedroom. And I say to them both, I love you lots and I'm glad you picked me. And then I'll, I'll kind of say it out to the rest of the house, to the other two dogs, right? Every single night I do that because I sincerely am very glad they picked me because I know they're bringing me lessons so I can help all of you. They're bringing me joy every day, but they're also giving me new challenges. Okay, so when you feel overwhelmed, give yourself grace. Do not feel guilty. You're doing the best you can. And then reframe it reframe how is how how is where's the lesson in there for you how can you connect with that dog what's the plan moving forward all right um so just know yeah you know whatever whatever we we ask for in our in our dogs uh we get it in some form so um but there'll always be some sort of unexpected form that came with it. For example, back when uh, I wrote a book called Shaping Success, you know, if it was really, a, you know, if I was a spanking, I'd have that book to show you. But um, I wrote it about Buzz, who was, his his registered name was um, High on Emotion. That maybe was a trigger because he, as a seven and eight week old puppy, he never stopped. I never, ever saw a dog like him. I've never saw a puppy like him before or after until the current one, the leaf. I think she's got a little buzz in her. And so my next dog, I didn't want that. And so I named her decaf because I figured once you've had a buzz, everybody needs a decaf. I don't want that high energy. I want something more mellow that I can bring up, bring up more drive. Wow. I got what I was hoping for, but guess what? It was a lot of work. So be careful what you ask for. Okay. Um, Allow yourself grace and what's going to happen is you will find, maybe record keep that, right? We've got, we've got uh, habit trackers for our recallers, habit tracker sheet, record keep that. How many times have you lost your shit today with your dog, your spouse, your kids, yourself? Record keep that. And you will find is when you do it and you reframe it to where's my lesson? How can I connect? And and remember, they're doing their best. They're doing their best, right? So super important. I believe that 100%. I believe it with my own heart. Okay, I'd like you guys to leave me a comment. And do you believe that dogs and people do the best they can with the education they've got in the, and the experiences in the environment that they find themselves? Give me a yes or a I'm not 100% sure about teenagers. Uh, so do you, do you believe it? Because if not, I just, I just want you to consider it. I just want you to consider it. So, so there's a few I'm looking over here on Insta. Yep. There's some few on Instagram. Yes. What about here on TikTok? Um, yes. Okay, good. And it's okay if you guys don't buy in. This is a mindset that I formulated over the last 30 years. I started following people like Dr. Wayne Dyer and Zig Ziglar and Anthony Robbins back in the 80s and the 90s. And that has formed my vision of 
other people. But most importantly for me, it's formed my opinion and vision of dogs. So the, the more you remind yourself of that, the less frustrating, the less overwhelmed you will feel. And if you ever find yourself calling your dog a jerk or an a-hole or a, you blow me off or whatever it is that you're thinking, those two beliefs can't live simultaneously within you. So you have to decide what is your core value. Do I believe dogs are being doing the best they can or do I believe dogs are being jerks? Those two core beliefs cannot coincide within you. And so I'm not saying you can't ever call your dog a jerk. I'm just saying the moment you do, something should trigger in your head that says, hmm, that goes against my core belief. He, he's not really being a jerk, is he? I've maybe given him too much freedom in this environment, or I didn't recognize the anxiety me yelling at my husband last night caused my dog, who is now um, filled with stress hormones, and this is the response that I'm getting. Okay? We don't know the why. We can just look at the behavior and say, how can we change it? Okay. Uh, yeah. I usually think so, but then I remember serial killers exist. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, that's a great, great point. There are dogs just like there are people who are chemically imbalanced. There, there definitely are bad or imbalanced, emotionally imbalanced people who are doing the best they can with the emotional imbalances that they have. And yes, so there are people that don't live up to the expectations we have for society. All right. But that is not, you know, that's not the norm, is it? That's, that's, that's the outliers. Those are the anomalies. And that's not what we're talking about here today. Okay. I was sent some questions and if you guys have any questions for me, please let me know. I just, oh, we got a question already. Holy smokes. Oh, Kim is, is in the background, but she got very comfortable on the couch and now she can't get up to bring me my question. Okay. Uh, dogs get scared randomly. How do I build confidence? It's layers. It is layers. So uh, in all our online programs, it doesn't matter if it's a dog who is terrified of a seesaw or it's a dog who's terrified of walking from the carpet to the linoleum or it's a dog that can't be like Kim just had um, the puppy in uh, in in town. I mean, we're, we both live in the country and where Kim lives, um, she drives to a town. And so she had the puppy at a farmer's market. It was woo, right? Like. It was a big outing. And so how do we deal with it? If you're familiar with the way that we train dogs, there's a few, there's a few um, important parts of them. Number one, the number one thing as your coach, I do is build your confidence because you will not be able to build confidence in your dog until I can build confidence in you. So the number one thing I have to do is help you to believe that it's possible for you to do this. And I have no doubts because we've seen so many people from so many different walks of life have so many challenge, end up in a better place within two weeks of being in any of our programs. So number one in it, it is the confidence. So belief, belief will help lead you to confidence, but then you need to have a plan. And for us, it's a layered approach and it, there's a few critical elements. I'm gonna, I was thinking I should do something for like social media, a little video to, to explain this and maybe we'll just take it from this video. So belief leads to confidence and, and then what we need to do is start growing that dog's confidence in different locations. And for us, it starts with choice. We don't try to lure the dog anywhere. We want them to make decisions and then we reinforce them. 
So choice is in everything that we do, right? From the very moment we get a puppy home or a rescue dog home, it's all about observing. And we, and my students become very, very good at looking at behavior, studying behavior and, and, and reinforcing choice. And we have games, right? Everything that we do is in the form of a game. So belief, confidence, choice and then the next layer that's super important it kind of goes co coincidentally is the arousal state of the dog the arousal state so i posted a video I, I think i might have it here hold on last week when i tried to show a video okay this video is a is a few minutes long but i'm going to share it with you i posted it on uh, it might come up on on youtube later but um i'm going to run this video and while it's running i'm going to go back and look at some of the comments here on TikTok. but um this talks about that arousal state. It's something that most other dog trainers don't ever talk about. And this, you know, this is a three minute expl expl explanation of it. I'm going to take a break and have a drink of water while you guys are watching this video. Here you go. Last week I did a TikTok video where I spoke about I have not used food lures in my training since the early 90s. I wanted to share another way that our program is so different than what most people do and um, the benefits that I see to all dog owners. Everything that we do is in the form of a game. 25 years ago, I made the decision I would never start a game, aka our training, unless my dog was showing me through their body language and engagement that they really wanted to play the game with me. And the byproduct of training in a state where they're saying, yes, let's go, is you get attention for the handler as a byproduct of training. I've never ever taught watch me or heads up, but yet I get it in spades from my dogs as a byproduct of the way we train. So let me just share with you what um, the arousal state looks like. This is performance or behavior of an animal. Over here we have the arousal state or the excitement level of the animal. Here we have our area of peak performance where people say they're in the zone. Dogs can be in the zone too, guys. On the, the blue side is when the dog isn't that aroused, they're not that excited. People say, oh, my dog's just not that into training or my dog's more chill dog. In the blue zone, what happens is dogs notice insignificant things in their environment. They're more noticed to go, oh, that was a leaf. Oh, what was that? I, I, see, is, I see a dog coming. And so if we can get them before we try to work, if we can get them into a higher arousal state, then they're less likely to notice those insignificant things in their environment. So people would say to me, oh, my dog can't work on wet grass. He doesn't like wet grass. If we can get them into this zone, they're far less likely to notice the insignificant things in their environment. I call it creating environmental neutrality, where all I have is attention for you. What's happening out there doesn't, doesn't matter. Now, yes, we can get our dog to arouse and where they get into the red zone. And in the red zone, their focus narrows so much that they aren't taking in the important things. So they might be like just focused on chasing a cat and you calling them, you try, they can't hear you. They're over aroused. I'm going to show you a video clip of my puppy who at 15 weeks old is obviously very distracted in new environments. However, this weekend, Kim took her to the farmer's market and she used high energy games to create a higher state of arousal so that she could minimize the distractions for the puppy. You notice when in between games, the puppy does look around, but quickly re-engages. Kim will keep playing these high energy games until the distractions in the environment are minimized. And only then will she go to training with food because then she knows she has the puppy's focus. And that's why even first time dog owners are having success within our online programs. It's their new awareness of their dog's arousal states coupled with the games which organically put their dogs into a state of peak performance. Make sense? Okay, so I apologize to Instagram and, um, and TikTok folk because um, I forgot I had the earpiece plugged in so you couldn't hear. So all good, all good. So belief and then I have what's called a 5P, uh, 5C pyramid that I use in all my classrooms. And here's what it looks like. We get connection. So in that little video that you just saw, that's what Kim was doing. Her games that she was playing with belief were creating a connection between her and the puppy. And then once you have connection, so in the 5P, 5C pyramid, 
Connection is at the bottom. Then we grow clarity. So once she got connection and helped bring that puppy into a higher state of arousal where she didn't notice what was going on, then she worked on the clarity of walking beside her. All right. And then what we're doing is growing that dog's confidence. That's our third C, confidence. Confidence for the behavior that we're trying to train. In this case, confidence in that environment. Now, once you have confidence, you can now add a little bit of challenge. And that's what Kim did. She didn't teach her walk by her side at the farmer's market. We've been doing that in this house, in Kim's house, outside, inside, in the building, all different environments. Farmer's market was just another challenge. Our fourth C. The fifth C is complexity, is taking her where there's a very stimulating environment, but she's 15 weeks old. What are the chances we're doing that in the next week or two? not happening, right? Because five C's, that's the layers. So in our, within our program are exactly what we're doing right now is just recall our games. So we start with you believing yourself, you believing in your dog. That's where a really good coach will help you. And then it's the, the connection, the confidence, and then the clarity. We ha have to have choice. We introduce choice to those dogs and uh, the arousal state. And then comes all those layers of learning. And those are everything that I do with my dogs. I don't teach anything. And I like to think my dogs are really, really well-trained. I don't think, I don't teach anything that isn't a game. So what we do is very different than what you will find any other trainer do. Everything we do is in a game because a game, I don't want to get too much detail, but what happens is you get a dopamine release. When you train with a, a lure, initially there is a dopamine release, but very quickly that doesn't happen. Now, this is a paper that was published in the mid nineties that I'm quoting, that they actually measured the dopamine release in a dog's brain. And, and so when what happens is there's no dopamine release unless there's a choice point. So we put the dog into a peak state of arousal by playing these games. And then the rewards happen after the choice point and the choice point creates a dopamine release, which is why our dogs get addicted to training. And it's also why we can lose the food if we choose to very, very early on in the training. Okay. So that is connected to a question that came in here um, where did I, I did see it. It was about somebody's mother's dog. Um, uh, okay. I, 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 maybe I saw it go by and it said my mother's dog, um, listens on leash and listens in a small room, but when she goes to the park, it doesn't listen at all. That was the question. All right. I think everybody who's on this live now should be able to answer that question. What happened in that instance? Dog listens at home, listens on a leash, listens in a small environment, goes to the park, doesn't listen. We introduce complexity before we had confidence, clarity. Where was the choice? Is there choice at home? I don't know. But we're asking the dog at the park to make good choices. Are you setting the dog up? by making choices on their own. So there's three things that I don't do with my dog. I, and I, and I don't, and I don't teach my students to do. I don't use food lures ever. I always use games and arousal states. I don't use long lines ever. So we do things differently, but we have massive success because it's all about letting the dog make right choices. Okay. So it's those layers of learning and guess what? There's a, there's a great book by uh, BJ Fogg, Fogg and um, man, I can't remember the name of that book. I love the book, the habit. Anyway, there's a quote in there that goes, we change best when we feel good, not when we feel bad. If you want sustained long time change, so somebody's shaming you into um, losing weight. How's that going to go for you? Are you going to lose weight? But if somehow you can make a game of losing weight for yourself, then 
you're going to change. We change best when we feel good, not when we feel bad. That's why training a dog with games, managing the environment, creating reasons for them to make good choices. Tiny habits, Lisa, thank you. Did you? For setting the dog up to make good choices on their own. That's the formula for the dog making good choices at the park. That's it. Because what happens, as you could see with that puppy, as I mentioned in the video, the puppy, we're starting to get environmental neutrality with that puppy because all of the people that before she was like, they're turning into white noise. They're turning into white noise. Other dogs will turn into white noise. Livestock, wildlife, kids on bikes, skateboarders, they're going to turn into white noise as we gain environmental neutrality. Everything is neutralized outside of the environment. My dogs were out walking. They see a deer. There's a deer, whatever. We keep walking. They're high drive prey animals, but they've been raised exactly the way I talked about at the beginning of this. Okay. All right. So, um, my young dog struggles with the start line state. Does this mean he's not confident, worried? I know it's his fault. I know it's not his fault. I'm frustrated. Okay. Start lines are my deal. I, 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 I can't remember. I figured it out for a podcast. I did a podcast on, on um, controlled behaviors. And I've been in the sport of agility since uh, 1989. Yes, 1989 is when I started in the sport of agility. 89. Somebody do the math for me there. So I figured in all of the training that I did, leaving the dog and walking out and at home, all of the training I did with stays and all of the competing I've done, think of how many thousands of times I've been in the agility ring in the last 30, whatever that is, years. Um, I've only had one dog ever break a stay at practice or at a trial. I'm pretty good at that. So yes, there's a little bit of confidence, but it all comes down to the exactly the formula. Thank you, Allison. Exactly the formula I just gave you. It's a formula for everything we do. So people, one of the comments that, that I, uh, the questions I was given before this live started was, um, why don't we have access to your program? We buy it. Why can't we keep it forever? Because I, if you listen to my podcast or you listen to me going live, I give away phenomenal dog training. I give it away because that's not why you're signing up to, to, to any of our programs today. You're signing up so that I can coach you because knowledge is nothing. If it doesn't come from your head, through your heart, down your hands to your dog. So you're signing up for a year of coaching. Oh yeah. We're giving you a lot. Like nobody has ever invested in one of our programs and said, oh, I, I didn't feel like I got enough. We always give a bajillion times more than people think they are going to get. Okay. So, um, that's why you don't get lifetime access to our programs because the dog training, you could probably get a good amount of it just by listening to my podcasts. There are every one of them. I make sure is a masterclass, but you cannot get the coaching myself and my team are going to give you when you sign up for one of our programs, whether it be homeschool, the dog, which is just I think four months, unless you buy the bundles and, and it's six or the year long, like, um, recallers or, or, uh, handling 360. Okay. Um, can I do recallers with a puppy? Oh my gosh. Yes. So belief 15 weeks old. I think she's pretty impressive myself and all that we've been doing with her is recaller games. So there's different within recallers. There are different, um, like bonuses. So some of the things we're doing, um, are from some of the bonuses of recallers, the vast majority of what we do is that, that we're doing with that puppy right now, strictly recaller games. I'm not sure if there's any homeschool, the dog games. I mean, there's, there's some crossover between homeschool, the dog and recallers, but um, not sure if there's any specific homeschooler dog games that we do we are doing. Okay, um, other, that are not in recolors. Okay, so I got through 
that one and I answered this one. So can I do recallers with a puppy? Oh my gosh, this is the best. This is the best. And, and what about if I have a, an eight year old dog? Yes. You know, the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. What a freaking load of malarkey that is. We've had 15 year old dogs come through recallers any age dog, because why would a 15, why would somebody with a 15 year old dog sign up for a program? Do they have behavior problems? No, they just wanted a way to engage their senior dog because they love them. Right. Um, so, uh, which program would be best for me for improving my relationship? My lab is female pushing, controlling my peer ship mix obsessed with my senior females back end. Um, so strongly encourage you to join recallers. And if you contact, once you join, um, I would, or, you know, you can just go and look on my podcast because I just did a series on pushy puppies. I don't know if this is a puppy, but the same thing would, would, um, would absolutely be true is we need to protect our older dogs, whether they're the three-year-old and you've got a 10-week-old puppy or it's a 10-year-old and you got a two-year-old dog. Number one job as our dog's owner is always protect and grow our dog's confidence in any environment that we can do it. Okay, uh, suggestions for a dog who's not food or toy motivated. Well, <clears throat> one of the things that we do when you are in recallers, I'm not sure. So when you join recallers, we have a lot of extra things that we give you. And one of them is this book. It's called the Doggy ADD Solution. And it's filled with dog training for people who have a dog that is at one or the other end of the spectrum. So both are our work. Dogs who are under motivated and under stimulated by the environment. And dogs who are like a little cray cray, right? That they they kind of live their life humming up here. So this book, when um, it doesn't matter if it, we we do the same thing in in handling three hundred and sixty, is we've got to work on your dog training and your relationship first. So dog who doesn't is not mo food or toy motivated. What we do is we work on getting what is motivational for that dog and transferring it first to one thing, what is easy and is usually a piece of high value food. So for example, years ago I taught in Japan and I had a dog that there that was, yeah, same thing, not motivated by anything. And I said, what does the dog love? Nothing. I said, when do you see that dog's tail wag in a circle? Call it the helicopter tail. She goes, oh yeah, when we go for a car ride. I said, that's great. Here's what you're going to do when you're not, you know, they, they worked in a few hour blocks with me throughout the day, um, different groups. And I said, but when you're working with me, when you're not working with, with me, what I want you to do is you're going to get your dog to eat one cookie. And then you're going to say car ride and you're going to run out and put her in the car. Guess what happened? It took less than a day. And the dog was like just devouring those cookies. So transfer of value. And, and, you know, how can you train a dog that isn't motivated by anything? That's, that's what we work first. Doggy ADD solution. We work on getting them motivated by something. Okay. Um, I am not good at being organized. Will your classes work for me? Um, could I, I, I want to show you guys um, a video. I want to, I'm going to have to walk you through this one. I'm going to show you guys a video. This is an example. All of our online programs, I have like an amazing, crazy, amazing team. And on that crazy, amazing team is a hey, shout out. Let's have some hearts for my team. Okay, thank you. On my team is a crazy, amazing tech department. I have no idea what they all do, but they're brilliant and they make things for me. And so our classrooms are custom built. They're not like, uh, oh, join our program and we're going to throw you into a Facebook group and give you some lessons there. No disrespect to the people that do that. There's that, That's just a different way to, to d deliver education. Here's what I know. When people join my program, I take it personally. I need you to achieve your goal. And so I have to be a really good dog trainer. I have to be a really good communicator. 
and I have to be a really good educator. In part, because we're doing this online, a big part of it is how do we organize the information for you? And so I just want to give you a little peek into what that looks like. Okay. So. Okay, so um, I was told you guys couldn't hear me. So I apologize for that. Um, so uh, what I did was I just gave you a brief run through what recallers looks like um, when you are a member. And I just signed in on my phone and went quickly through the course. And of course I went to the bonuses. I went through the bonuses and what I wanted to say, we have, we have two programs that are really popular um, that you get as bonuses. And one is called Pedicure Please. It's how we get cooperative care for our dogs for grooming, where they just lay on their side and they let you cut their nails. And that's just a bone. You can get that on our, on our, on our um, website. I'm not sure what it costs, like 20 or $30. But the difference is when you're in recallers, we coach you through it. So it's worth about $500 because once we open it, you can ask us questions and post your videos, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So that just, I just wanted you to see a little glimpse of, of what it looks like. It's not, it's a custom made classroom that was intentionally built to help people be able to learn. Be, uh, oh. Sorry, TikTok. I don't know. I, the, the phone was dying. I plugged you in and thank you. Sorry. Sorry, TikTokers. We're back. Uh, no, it says it's still on. Okay. I hope it is. Anyway. Um, okay. Well, recallers help with separation anxiety. Separation anxiety is such a massive gamut, right? So will it make it better? A hundred percent. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. Will it solve it? I can't answer that because I don't know where you're starting. Sometimes, like once you're in our program, you can uh, share what you're dealing with. And we may say, yeah, maybe let's get, get you set up with a professional that's going to help you. So um, we have seen a lot of dogs progress with it. But I don't want to promise everything, guys. It is a program that helps build a better relationship, build an amazing recall, build a dog who wants to walk on leash, um, retrieve the toys to you. That's another bonus that you get. Um, I just started recallers. How long should I spend on the first four games before moving on? And uh, it, so those first four games called the critical core, you're never, you're never done. I still play them with my own dogs. So you get them roughly right, move on to the next and, and bring those four along. So if you don't have time in a day to practice all four, you're going to do the one that you can do best because we're constantly growing confidence and we don't want to overwhelm you or your dog. I don't want you to feel bad about yourself if you're suddenly struggling with being able to play these games. So you're going to bring 
You're going to learn your new one. You're going to do one that you, you can do really well. And you're going to do one that you know you and your dog need to go do it again. It's your choice is probably going to be done every day though. Okay. Um, but welcome to the program. Um, I have a five-year-old, a two-year-old, and one-year-old regarding your programs. Where would we start? I have a 10 and 12-year-old kids that want to learn too. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? We have a lot of parents that make this a family outing. So 10 and 12 years old is like perfect, perfect age. Okay. So I would start with recallers. All right. And, um, like there's in, in the, there's so many of these books that you can download uh, as you're going along. So a uh, record keeping journal, we teach you, there's a little video program that teaches you how to keep records. Um, this is, I think this one might be something that you get right away. So this is uh, um, a journal of a rescue dog that I brought in and uh, he had been to three homes and two of them were fly ball homes and they, he was only like maybe a year old. And um, people said, no, he'll never do sports. He, he had no interest in food, no, no interest in toys. And I documented and wrote it all in a journal, everything I did. He ended up being one of the um, fastest fly ball dogs at, of his time and played. And, and he was adopted by a family who adored him. So um, that just give you an example of some of the extra stuff that, that you are getting. Everything comes back to games. Um, the uh, agility handling 360 this is one of our classrooms because agility has got a lot of a lot of you know documents that you've got to put in for people that's like like there, there's drawings right so our our classroom books are huge for um, that's like a collection of all the lessons put into a into a a book for people uh any possibility to see step by step on how to train a new 15 week old puppy? If you have a new puppy and belief. oh, belief, I think so. you can go to YouTube, you can go to TikTok, and you will see I've got lots of videos posted there of how I how I train how I've trained her. All right, uh, including uh, the exact step by steps of how I taught her down. Um, okay, so I think I covered this one. I'm not good at being organized. Our classrooms help you to be organized. Our coaches help you to take action. We send you an email every week. We, we, our community keeps you accountable. Um, this is a great question. How do I find time to train my dog? Because if some people are looking at handling through sixties is like close, I don't know, a thousand dollars us. So depending on the country you live in, that might be, I don't know, like a lot of money. And I mean, it's a lot of money in any country. But um, recallers, I think it's $500 or close to it. Susan, even if that money was like I could get it together, and by the way, we do have installments that you can pay monthly. Even if I could get that together, Susan, like what if I just don't have time and then I'm going to feel like a complete jerk for wasting this money? So this is a real concern. You're a, you're a mother or you're working or you've got, um, you know, other outside activities or you're dealing with a parent that needs your help or, right? There's a lot of things pulling you. So here's what I want you to, to know. Number one, we have a parachute for you. We have two weeks where you can join the pro program, be a student, decide if this is working out with your schedule. And, and you know, when we're getting close to the two weeks, if you go, I'm in overwhelm, which I would very doubt. But if you do, you contact us. We don't ask questions. We give you a full refund. All right. So that's like the just take a deep breath because I do not want to trap anyone in a program. I want people there that want to learn from me. I don't want people there because they feel obliged because they spent some money. 100%. Nothing kept back. It's, it's all coming back to you. All right. But here's the truth. If let's say you have an adolescent dog who's a bit of a handful, chances are you're managing behavior now. Maybe you're putting the garbage up on the on the counter and you have to, um, you know, make sure these doors have these closures on them. Every time you go out, you have to put the dog in a certain room and then you have to make sure that there's nothing on the floor at night that she might eat. All of that takes time. 
And on top of that, you're probably walking your dog every day. You're probably playing with them in some way. And you're probably doing some form of dog training at some point during the week. But the training that we're going to do is going to be so much fun. You're going to want to do it. And you're going to see results because the dog's going to want to do it. Remember the old dopamine release? kicking into the dog saying, yeah, I love this. I'm going to do it. So if you take all that time you're already spending with your dog, we're going to help you get really focused and intentional about when you're going for a walk. You're not just going for a walk. We're going to, we're going to get you doing a couple of games while you're out there. When you're playing with your dog, we will give you the step-by-steps of what you should be doing. And so it it's intentional on your part. It's intentional. I don't know if my TikTokers are still here. TikTokers, if you're there, uh, uh, give me, give me a, give me a, a heart. I don't know if you can give hearts. So, so will you do? The, will you play the games? I really believe you will, because you're just going to take all the time. Owning a dog takes time. You're going to take all the time that you're currently investing, and we're going to show you how to make that more effective to get results, right? And with what we do, I've, I mentioned this in another live, people say, how do I know I'm going to be motivated to do the work? We can't have you be motivated because motivation, anybody ever join Weight Watchers in January, New Year's Eve resolution, right? Three weeks. That's the average time that a gym membership lasts or Weight Watchers. Three weeks. Because you're relying on motivation. We are teaching you how to make habits. A tiny actions that we attach to something that you do. I'm going to give you an example. So, you know those little tiny Tupperware containers that like little tiny with a little lid on them? I don't know what they're for. Probably for the kids' lunch bucket. You're going to take some of those today. And what is your first action in the morning? Are you a coffee drinker? Do you put on a kettle or do you put on a coffee maker? So you're going to put, and if you go, oh, no, no, it's self-brews. That's fine. You're going to put that little thing of food and you're going to put it right beside your coffee maker with the first game that we have for you in Homeschool the Dog or Recallers or Handling 360. That game day sheet is going under the cookies. So you're going to pick up your coffee, open the cookies, remind you, because you read this the night before, you're going to remind yourself of what you're going to do. Take a sip play a few little rounds. We're building habits into the fabric of your day. That's how I train my dogs. I'm running a business with a busy team. I'm run I have to build I have to build the training into the day, okay? Um I have a puppy, a young dog for agility is handling 360 where I should start. Again, that depends, but we have something that is unique for people in your situation. So if you have a really young, young puppy, like it's two, three months old, then I really encourage you to start in recallers. Have you guys, uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to um, um, a friend and recaller student, Handling 360 student, Angie Benequisto, just won the European Open with her dog that she started in recallers. Now, I'm going to tell you, Angie was a phenomenal dog trainer when she started with us. She was already national champion in agility, but she started all over with her dog Sunday in recallers, then went on to handling 360 and is the European Open champion um, as an eight-year-old. Okay, so she and, oh, did I mention? I Probably everybody that was on the podium with, with Angie were professional dog trainers. And she's a school teacher. And the only reason that she can go to the European Open is because it's in the summer when she's not teaching school. So when you train efficiently, you don't have to train for hours. It's people that when you're relying on pattern training, luring the dog to do the same thing over and over again, doing the same thing over and over again, you need more time because we're looking for the dog to recognize a pattern. Kind of like you figuring out where your friend lives in that convoluted subdivision by following a GPS. How many times do you have to follow that GPS before you actually know where they live? Versus if we just gave you a little, a couple of little, um, you know, turn at these three spots, you'll figure it out on your own really quick. 
because you're making the choices. You're not following the lure of a GPS. Okay. Um, so with that young puppy, if it's super young, I would really encourage recallers. That's the path Angie took. If you're saying, oh, it's a seven, eight month old puppy and I'm really got things dialed in, great relationship, great recall, great, what you know, blah, blah, blah. Then we do have a puppy path in Handling 360. And if you're not sure, I would encourage you to, with it, with that older dog, join Handling 360. And if we look at your videos and go, um, you need some help. We have a program where you can pause Handling 360, jump into recallers, and pick up your Handling 360 membership in six months' time. So we give you extra time while you're working on recallers. Okay? Again, I don't want people feeling trapped because they joined our program. I want people to get results. I want people to have the kind of experience with their dogs that I have with mine. I want you to have the kind of experience that our students have with theirs that started exactly the same place a lot of you are starting, right? Uh, and that comes into this question is, um, where did it go? Is it true that any breed can do what Susan's dogs can do? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Is tater salad exactly the same drive and intensity and um, consistency as my border collies? No. I mean, honestly, we haven't trained him as much. But he's a bulldog. So there's going to be some limitations. But I believe that most people will look at his behaviors and say, okay, there's a lot of border collies that don't behave as well as he does. So... Here's where you're going to have success. If you come in as a blank slate, I don't care if you've trained five dogs. I don't care if you train 10. I don't care if it's your first dog. Come in with a beginner's mindset and just play the games, no matter what program you're in. We had a fellow from France who joined Handling 360 after he won a silver medal at the World Championships. And I said that to him. If you come in with a beginner, and it's amazing, the amazing, he was at the European Open with his dog, Must. Um, last weekend with young dog. Okay. So if you come in with a beginner's mindset and you just, you don't try to what we call SGBB, you don't take a game and go, I'm going to do, uh, it's your choice, but I'm going to get the dog to watch me. I'm going to do it. I'm going to hold the cookie out. I'm going to do it like the Zen game. I'm going to just change it a little bit. We call that Susan Garrett, but better. If you don't SGBB anything, you just follow the games, you will get the same results as our students will get. And some of them are exactly the same results that I get with my dogs. But of course, I have experience. So I can play the games with more fl fluidity, which you will get a year from now. You're going to be the ones people are going to look at your dogs and go, oh my gosh, look at how good she is at that. Okay. Um, what else? Does recallers teach dogs to wait when it's not their time to work? Yes. Yes. Hot zone. And if, as you're working through that, you post questions with us, say, this is what I'm doing, this is what I got, we can coach you through that. My dogs all wait and wait their turn, sometimes shaking the toy. Um, okay. Will I always have to use treats to reward my dog? As I mentioned, the way we train is different. I can take any one of my dogs outside and ask them to eat, including the bulldog, and ask them to do different things, and they're going to do it, and I can have zero toys or treats on me, all right? They will work. I happen to like playing with my dog, so I will use toys because I find it, it's, you know, good for my soul. I like reinforcing, but the challenge is, I, I'm going to tell you a story. Back when I taught in Japan, my late husband, he was judging an obedience competition there. And so that happened the first day and I was watching all these people taking notes of how I'm going to help them. And dog after dog after dog, when the leash came off, they walked out of the sun and it was hot and they went and laid in the shade. I think in the entire trial, he had one qualifier, one. And so I had those people in and the next day they all came in with their big uh, hardware store belt with all the compartments filled with amazing cookies. And I said, okay, let me see hand touch. Whoa. These dogs were like jumping to the sky. Bing, bing, bing. They were so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do it. Let me do it. And I said, okay, who knows a trick? They all showed their trick. 
Woo! Then I said, everyone take off your bait bags and put them on the windowsill and show me one behavior. Mm -hmm. um, their dogs are like, no, we have to. I, I can't do that right now. The drive to work went with the cookies. Now, I'm not saying everybody that lures, what have I done my hair, gets that. I'm not saying that at all. There's some very gifted trainers that use food lures, but they're very, very gifted. The vast majority of people I see that are using lures in their training are using them inappropriately and they're getting exactly the kind of behavior that our students were getting. Okay. Um, there's a love chat, best adult dating site that is posting in our chat room. I think that means we've been going for a very long time. Um, okay. Questions. Questions. If you have, do you guys have any specific questions for people? Oh, here's a good one, Pam. For people with mobility issues, do we have to go outside every day? I'm thinking of winter in Ontario on icy snow days. Can't get out. Will I be missing out on our learning and lessons? No, Pam. I'm going to give you a caveat though. I had this big epiphany. Those of us who live in extreme climates. So our friends in the South that live, get like extreme hot for long, long periods of the day of the, uh, of the year. And those of us that get extreme cold. And I got to tell you, Pam, you and I, soul sisters, fair weather girl right here. I do not like going out walking. One of my big regrets in building my new house was I didn't build a tunnel to the building because I hate walking outside in the cold. However, we, we have to make ourselves train occasionally outside because otherwise we're going to have an amazingly well-trained indoor dog. Where is it the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge is outside. So the really cool thing is with these games, you saw the puppy in the video. She's playing those games in a new environment. You can play indoors all winter, venture out once a week. That's all you need. And you're helping to generalize the games to new environments. And as the summer or the, the spring rolls around, you can start venturing out further and further and further. So the short answer is no. The, the correct answer is, however, we need to generalize those behaviors to outside because dogs running in the conservation area is when we really need them to listen. And if they only ever learned in the kitchen, conservation area is going to be too big of a stretch because dogs do not generalize ideally. Okay. Great question. Great question, Pam. And for people who generally have mobility issues, just know all of our classrooms, we have people who are in motorized scooters or they're in um, motorized wheelchairs or regular wheelchairs. So we, we have people with mobility issues in all, in all of our, okay, programs. How do I stop my chihuahua barking at dogs walking by the fence on the sidewalk? Doesn't bark on walks just in the yard and it gets extreme. Um, Number one, if you really want to stop it, you can. You have to have a plan of action that involves either the dog never being outside alone, or which means you're going to work, you're going to train the dog outside, working through that. And while you're training the dog and working through that, I would be doing recaller games is how I would work through that hot zone, keeping them away, teaching them because it's not good for dogs to be reactive at other dogs ever. Um, and so that's a big part. You'd have to make a commitment that they're not going outside alone anymore. And if you say, I have a dog door and that is never happening. The other best option I can give you is to, to um, put another fence within the fence so they can't get close to the fence, set them up maybe with a remote feeder. Okay. So that they can get reinforcement for, for doing really, really good things. Okay. So, uh, I'm just reading another question. What do we do to exercise when it's too hot or too cold? There's games that you can do in the home, but really the most important thing, yes, we need our dogs to get exercise, mental stimulation, which is why these games of choice are so brilliant for dogs to help them to be exhausted. Um, do you have to go all the way through recallers to start handling 360? No, you do not. However, if you're starting handling 360 and we see you have some behaviors, like the first part of handling 360 is getting your dog training kind of on an even keel. So we help you if your dog's a little bit high, we help you if your dog's not very motivated, 
But if we say that you've got some extreme problems, we will encourage you to put pause on Handling 360 and jump over to recallers. Uh, I have a two-year-old stray rescue, no recall. In the woods, she stays within eyesight. Where do I start? Mod, if at all possible, I always encourage people to start at, at recallers because you get the foundation of dog training so you understand all these layers and you, you see the dog changing. It doesn't matter if she's sort of okay. Um, you're going to get a different experience once uh, within two weeks, within two weeks, you'll see a different in that dog. <coughs> Excuse me. I did see a question about icy peeps up here somewhere for all the love, the love chatting happened. <coughs> oh, okay. On the fence with uh, the inner circle, could you explain the framework a little more? And does the inner circle get you access to all the courses? I'm more interested in the science of animal behavior, uh, reactivity, hyperactivity, aggression. <coughs> uh, I'm guessing I'm asking, is the inner circle more focused on existing programs or does it cover? Yes. So it always comes back to recallers games. And um, yes, I believe when you join inner circle, you get recallers and you might even get homeschool the dog in Wag Nation. Um, so we do talk about, for example, matching law. We had some questions about matching law this, this, this week, this month. So we have a monthly call where we, I, I will sometimes do a presentation. Sometimes like this month's call was, um, we had eight, eight members that wanted to, that were willing to train on, on the live stream. And we talked about mechanics, um, really about mechanics of, uh, it was cooperative care was that month. So we've got, I don't, I don't know more hours than you would have in a, in a, a long time to go through all of the coaching that's still there. All of the visits of Bob Bailey and Steve White and uh, that's all there in the ICP library for people. So there's a, great deal of science. However, we, we don't talk specifically about, uh, in depth about, you know, we, we talk about the steps to overcoming problems, but not, um, all that's involved with say react, uh, aggression, reactivity. Yes. Aggression. No, because that's not the focus. So I think you'll like, I think you'll like it, Adam. I think it will be worthwhile for you. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, you gave me one? Oh, it, so is recall, here it is, is recallers for obedience training of a 15 week old Brussels. Recallers, oh Maud, you're awesome. Recallers will make your obedience training amazing amazing. You will have bulletproof stays. You will have amazing animated, happy healing. Am obviously you'll have amazing recalls, but you won't have like the specifics of how to teach a front. So it isn't an obedience program. No, it's a relationship building dog training, coaching program where we coach you to understand how you can do number one, the 40 games we have for you and all the extra things like a retrieve. Oh yeah. You're going to have an amazing retrieve when you, with your Brussels as well. So is it an obedience course? Absolutely not. Will you get unbelievable obedience behaviors because you're a recallers? Yeah, for sure. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. Okay. Do I do a live every day? <laughs> Sheila? No, I don't because, um, I, you know, I do lives at different times during the year mostly now I used to do a lot more lives, but since I started the podcast, I don't do nearly as many as I used to. So sometimes I do lives when I'm out walking the dogs, um, kind of a topic of the month. Uh, my seven month old lunges, my seven month old healer lunges at people. Okay. So I would encourage you to join recallers with a caveat that so stimulating, getting the brain games, getting choice based games, but the, the caveat is if you have a highly reactive dog, I, I always, 
<coughs> encourage people to seek out the help of a behaviorist. And we certainly can make that evaluation for you <coughs> within the program. Okay, so the be my best suggestion, Bren, is join us for two weeks and make a decision. <coughs> if a 70-year-old wants to train a high-energy Doberman, what would you suggest to avoid? That's a strange question. Um, can you grab me some more water, please? Um, well, it depends on how active and fit you are as a 70-year-old, because 70 is not that old, coming from a 61-year-old. I am not 62. You were wrong. No. Um, so, so I'm not sure if you're asking, should you join one of our programs? 100%. I strongly encourage it. Um, I strongly encourage it if you can swing it to get into recallers with your Dolby. Um, because as you know, I'm, I'm confident you've owned Adobe before and you know that they're easy to create um, anxiety and neurosis in that breed and getting them thinking and getting them um, making good choices will help them to grow confidence and relax. Okay. Oh, thank you, Delana. Delana writes, from a current recaller person with a now seven or nine month old, it has totally catapulted our obedience trainer training, even with a reactive dog. I joined when he was six months old. Woohoo, hoo John, John, Dawn, part of the six decade generation. Uh, oh, Rachel, welcome. Okay, any questions before I pop off? One more question coming in. I'm here. I will stay as long as you have questions for me, guys. Is a 13 and a half year old dog and wants to know if she can find some things in recall that can help them both grow? Does it make sense to do it with an elderly dog? Yes, as I said, we've had dogs older than that that have joined. Um, oh, so the question is she has a 13 year old dog. Does it make sense to join recallers with that dog? Now, if the dog has, you know, has any issues, then we will maybe uh, suggest there's some games that you don't go crazy with, but a hundred percent of that, it, it's going to enrich that dog's life. It's going to, you know, deepen the connection you guys already clearly have it. Yeah, definitely a great idea. Um, pedicure, please. Is it in homeschool the dog? I believe it is. Oh, El Elaine, can you please rewrite your question? Because I don't know if I have it. And I definitely will answer it. I do agility. Should I join Agility Nation or Handling 360? My dog misses contacts. Okay. I always strongly encourage, if you can, to do both. But if you can only do one and you just want to fix your um, contacts, then I strongly encourage Agility Nation. But Agility Nation, you're kind of, there's, it's like being in a candy shop and having like the most amazing candy in the world all around you. And you have to pick the one that you want best right now because there's all these little mini a la carte um, trainings that you have to go through. Okay. Thank you, Renata. Renata says I'm her favorite dog trainer. Oh, so my team says no, pedicure please is not part of homeschool the dog. All right. It's only in recallers, or I believe you can get it. My team will correct me if I'm wrong. I believe you can purchase it um, as a standalone, but you you get all, all the videos and all of the uh, downloadable um, PDFs, but you don't get the coaching. When you join recallers, we just add it as a bonus. It's, it's like you're paying whatever, $500 for recallers, and you're probably getting another $2,000 worth of courses after that to help you with your dog. I just, I think we got people in recallers and the first thing was, well, we got to help people with their tugging. We got to teach them how to tug um, for the people who really want to have that kind of deep in re uh, relationship with toys. So we created a course called Tuggers. Then the next was, well, now we've got them tugging, but the dogs won't bring the toy back. 
Okay, well then I created a course called Upbring Me, which is getting the dog to upbring back the toy. And then that's how it just keeps adding. Recallers is like, it's amazing stuff in there. Is H360 good for a three month old mini Aussie? I would encourage that you would do recallers with your mini Aussie. That's where I would really encourage you. That's what I'm doing with belief. So belief is not going to be doing anything. Um, I and mean, we're just doing recaller games with her. That's, I mean, we do a lot of recaller games. Okay. Who, oh, is that Tater? Oh, I forgot about Barkenstein's. It's a bonus in recallers too, to help dogs who have an issue about barking. <clears throat> Um, okay. Elaine's question. Here it is. My BC is five. He is well-mannered and we are in recolors. He has this one unstoppable thing. When I go to the barn and in the big stall, he goes totally batch hip flying back and forth around the barn. I have a two foot trench from him. I have him in a tie. I, I have to tie him or put him back in the tack room. Nothing else. I have tried work. Um, when I go to the barn, you put them in a big stall? Yes, Garden, I do believe that, that Tater would have ended up more like a border collie if we'd raised him from a puppy. Um, so he knows crate games, Elaine. Why don't you just bring a crate? Um, or like, or, or teach hot zone at the barn. I mean, that's what I always did. I'd go, um, I take my Jack Russell to the, to the barn and I had a, a, I used my tack box and I just taught her that's your hot zone. You don't leave it until I come back uh, from riding unless I was going uh, hacking and she would come with me. So, um, when you go, Oh, when you personally go in to a stall with another horse. So I think your answer, Post it in recallers, but I believe your answer will lie in hot zone and um, crate games. I would start with crate games because clearly we need some um, good choices made. Okay. Um, yes, I think Tater would have turned out. Tater had a year where he was very well loved, but he had no enrichment or interaction. Plus, he was a broker puppy, which means he was probably taken from his mother when he was like three weeks old, sold to a broker and raised there probably with his litter mate, but we don't know. And then, um, so there was a lot of problems before he even went to his first home. Okay. Any other questions before we hop off? You guys who've been here on Instagram and TikTok, you're troopers. Uh, how do you sign up for re recallers? Boxer Mom, if you go to, look at this. I'm going to put this banner up so you can see it. Oh, I think it's going to be backwards for you guys, though. Uh, no, it's not. Dogsat.com forward slash celebrate. That's how you go and sign up. All of our courses are there. And you will see, you get to see, like, we have a, a page where you can see the experiences of our students where they share what they what, what what they've gone through, how they enjoyed the program. So there's a lot that you can go to dogsat.com and forward slash celebrate and see it all there. Uh, okay, can somebody do something with blocking the love chat people? <laughs> because they're very insistent that we all go on a love chat. Do I recommend blocking windows to stop barking at outside movement? Um, it really, the answer is depends. I would avoid it because it would be a PIA for me. So I would work at creating um, calm and not reacting to triggers in a different way. But if but the dog cannot have access to that window while you're retraining it. Do I have a current, okay, this is a question for you, Kim, because I'm going to think about it too. What is your current favorite game to play with belief? That was mine. <laughs> we both picked the same game, reverse retrieve. 
Um, is that it? That's yeah. I I know it's in it's in Hanley three sixty. I think it's in uh, yeah. It's it's in recallers too. Of course it is. I like one two three game too. Can I do recallers with two dogs? Yes, yes, yes. You um would teach hot zone if you go to the library i think the there's a whole thing for hot zone right there and um what i this is what i did when i started with two dogs um obviously i was inventing these games at the time so back 30 years ago one dog i would put on the couch and i would walk the other dog on on leash by the one on the couch and i'd give the one on the couch a cookie and after like two passes the one walking with me would get a cookie and eventually so the dog on the couch at first got more cookies than the dog that was being worked and then uh eventually the dog that was waiting its turn was super chill and excited to wait its turn so um it's not in recallers no well Yeah, reverse retrieve is kind of like cookie in the corner, but we use a toy. Good description. Um, one, two, three game is definitely one of my favorites too. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, pause at play. 14 month of poodle, I'm finding difficult to get a fast cone wrap. Are you in agility nation, pause at play? Because as a matter of fact, that um, the workshop for August is all about how to build drive in, in, around different agility obstacles, and the cone is one of them. Um, okay, I'm I, I'm still I'm looking on my Instagram, folk, seeing if there's any any uh, questions on. So I got some from TikTok. Thank you. A lot of really kind comments on Instagram. Thank you, guys. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that I had to scroll. Thoughts on dog parks. I think dog parks are great to work distraction work from the outside, but don't ever go in them. Um, and I'm saying that kind of tongue in cheek. There's a dog park that I cycle by that um, it's like the neighborhood people the friends in the neighborhood all get together at the same time every night so that's the same 15 dogs every single night they all have a great old time but if i was there i would be calling my dog out of play constantly because they're learning to just run amok with a big group of dogs yeah. um Wow. So Marie Butler wrote, Susan, my dog has now stopped being so vigilant on walks. He seemed to be looking for dogs to get upset about. Now on game 34 of recallers, he seems to be looking more relaxed, more flowing, walking, and looking at me more. How has that happened when I've not worked on his reactivity? Because we've created environmental neutrality. And I don't like to promise that because I know re reactivity is such a huge problem. But I've seen it in so many dogs that are reactive when they go through the program. Uh, 1.5 year old rescue uh, had her five months. Can't get her attention as we get out the door. All right. So, uh, it's those layers that I talked about at the very beginning, the layers of that, that create the choice to want to engage with you just exactly like Marie. I just read Marie's comment in, in recallers. It gets easier when you are focusing the dog at making good choices on their own. They learn to do exactly what we want them to do. Okay. Uh, how are monthly classes announced in recallers? So you go, this is a really cool thing. You go at your own pace in all of our online classes. So we, we, we have, um, in every classroom, there's, there's like between four and six games already opened up there with you for you as soon as you join. And then every week or every second week, we give you more. 
And uh, it's Agility Nation and Wag Nation are the only ones that you get monthly. Well, you get weekly stuff in there too. So you go at your own pace is my point. We're in July. We're in August now, aren't we? Sorry. A lot of people here in North America are going on holidays. So they can't keep up with any kind of program. You go at your pace. If you're like me, like to get up at 4.30 in the morning, then chances are there will be a coach on at that time because our, our coaches in Australia will be on or probably just getting off at that time, actually. So you'll get your questions answered pretty quickly because we have coaches all over the world. If you're a person who prefers to work at 11 o'clock at night when some of us are sound asleep, then that's great. That's the cool thing about working online. Here's what, here's what I know. I've been teaching seminars and one-on-one -on -one privates. I did all that for years and weekly classes here in our building. The students that work online by far have the best quality behaviors of all of my students. And it always kind of insulted me. I have people coming here to work with me and pay me for a private lesson and they don't get as good a result as my students online. Why is that? And then I figured it out. Because when you are working online, you watch a video of, now in recallers, for example, it's videos of me coaching regular folk like you. It isn't just look at my dog. She's won 12 world championships. Isn't she great? It is me coaching people to get behavior with their dog. There's, I think, I don't know, 20 different breeds of dogs that we use in the, in, in the classrooms. I like, I didn't even know some of these people. They just came and I helped coach them. All right. So I coach these people. So you get on, you watch the video, you download the lesson. You can put it on your iPad. You can put it on your tablet. You can print it out and you can take notes. If you want, you watch the lesson and then we encourage everybody to set up a little tripod and video their own training. And then you compare Susan Garrett doing this game and my dog and I doing this game. And you go, okay, Susan actually had her dog on a leash. Uh, okay, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna try that again. And that's how my online students get so good. Because I, whenever I travel, I whenever I travel any in the world and I have meetups with some of my students. And I watch them train. They sound like little Susan Garretts. They use the same inflection in their voice. I'll tell you what, there's a there's a woman's prison program in uh, Austin, Texas, that we've been giving a lot of inf you know, support and 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 we've been giving them some dog training information. And um, they I, I sent a video of them training, and they sound like little Susan Garretts. They've they've never met me, but they have amazing behaviors. And that's why this works. Now, if you still want to go to a local class, especially if you have a puppy, it's good to get them out and socialize them. That's fine. But your local student instructor is going to be blown away in two weeks. They're going to go, what are you doing? This is crazy. How good your dog is. Uh, what? Yeah, Marie writes, what I like most is the coaches give advice on how to tweak your mechanics to get optimal results. You know what? I can't train your dog. We can't train your dog. So we have to focus on your behaviors to get better results. Right. Um, okay. I'm looking Instagram, anything else? Oh, a few more. Well, it's your choice. Start, stop my dog from licking a wound suture. I don't think so, but an Elizabethan collar will, uh, you know what dogs like to lick wound su sutures. That's how they roll. Um, when do you call dogs out of play? Um, it depends on the dog. So all of my dogs, I would call out like once in a session. If it was a puppy, I'd be calling them like, I don't know, every three or four minutes. Um, until I know that they'll reliably come all the time. And then I'll let that go longer. How do I stop car hunting with my border collie? Um, layers of learning right? And um, managing until you get the response that that Marie talked about with her dog, right? So Marie had a dog who was reactive to other dogs. Your dog is reactive to cars. So layers of learning, 100% is going to make it better. That, that everything that I talked about at the beginning of this live, right? And if you can join one of our programs, that's great. If you're not in a position to do that, then I know it will take longer, 
you still could get there if you follow what I the I I in I gave you it right at the very beginning. Exactly what we do, the five C pyramid. You've got to play games that the dog is making the choice. You're not forcing choices on them. And while you're doing that and building up this different relationship, I would advise that you walk the dog either on a slow uh, a road that doesn't have a lot of cars or you drive them somewhere and walk them in a more remote area like a ball diamond or you um, give them two weeks of just doing exercises at home or you walk them on the street but you walk across people's lawns that you can get further away from the road. Probably not a good idea because you might get yelled at. Just say, Susan Garrett told me to do this. Um, okay. I'm in homeschool the dog with a 16 week old Aussie, but recallers, it sounds easier to follow. Recallers, um, I mean, they're, they're very similar. The most important thing in homeschool the dog is your, your core games, and then they grow in recallers. So homeschool the dog is, um, I'll tell you what the biggest difference that I see between the two is recallers is a committed community. It's the people that are in the classroom. Homeschool the dog are people who they don't know, like, and trust me yet. And so they really think they want to join one of our programs. So they're going to start out in homeschool the dog because it's not such a big investment right now because we have it on a promotional price. And so they join that. So there's a lot more people that I think are testing the waters and aren't as committed to putting the habits into action. <clears throat> so I think it's the community that, that I see makes the biggest difference. We have people that get great results from homeschool the dog. So, so don't let me tell you that you're not going to get amazing results, but it's a much, much shorter program, right? With a different focus than recallers. Recallers is really about getting the dog to come when they're called and having a nice loose leash. Um, what about those of us who can't swing it right now? Um, we do have installments. And if you look at PayPal, they have something called PayPal for it's brand new. Um, look at your PayPal account and they can maybe, um, their installments have no interest. Okay. How many games are on recallers versus 360? Hamling 360 is a lot more like a quadrillion times more. I think a quadrillion. <clears throat> Recallers is 40 games and a lot of extra courses. Handling 360 is like a whole year of different games to build because there's so, like agility, there's so much you have to know. So much you have to know. Okay. Um, tips on mechanics with a long leash. I haven't used a long leash since 1992, so you probably would get better answers from other trainers. So honestly, I'm I'm not a long line. Oh, maybe a long leash. I gather my long leash, so and I I feed it out and I bring it in. So I have a six foot leash. Um, now I have a nine foot leash that I use a lot, or I put that nine foot. If it's a nine footer, I keep it around my neck and I don't touch it. So right from the time I have a puppy, that's my goal. I go and it's like every time I have to touch it, I go, mm, that means I haven't put enough value in the puppy not focusing on me. Uh, okay. Why don't I do this? This is easier. I just welcomed a four-month-old rescue, a Catahoula type. What program would you recommend I look into first desperately in need of help to prevent the dog from barking in its crate? Well, Hannah, I always tell people, if you can swing it, recallers will change your life and your dog's life. If that's not possible, then I would do a combination of crate games online and the homeschool the dog package. But four months old is perfect for you to join um, recallers. I should have been doing this all along for all you people watching on TikTok. Pardon me? Um, that was Hannah. Want to do recallers with two dogs, but one dog doesn't like treats. I need other suggestions to keep her on the sofa. Um, what I would do is that's what you're training. You're training 
the love of treats. Just like I spoke about the dog in Japan who loved car rides. I had another dog in Atlanta when I was teaching there a hundred billion years ago that didn't like food, didn't like treats, but loved bubbles. You know, the kids bubbles. Ding. So at first it was, you have to eat this piece of roast beef. And he was like, Eeyore, all right, I guess I'll eat the roast beef. It took him like five minutes to eat one little piece of roast beef. As soon as he swallowed it, I had his, his owner yell bubbles, which he didn't know what it meant. And then she'd run across the room to a table where the bubbles were and he'd get to like spring at the air and catch all the bubbles, one string of bubbles. And then we'd go back and do that. And then she'd sit down for five minutes and, and then we added, you have to touch my hand. I remember this now. Here's how that seminar started. She said, I can't motivate this dog, motivate this dog for anything. And so my obedience instructor told me if I can't figure out a way to motivate it, to pick up a dumbbell by the end of your seminar, we're going to be putting it on a pinch collar and ear pinching it as well to get it to train and retrieve. And I'm like, okay, no pressure. But of course we did it by the end of the weekend. Uh, and well, congratulations on getting a new puppy and congratulations on being in the 61 years old club. Woo, woo, woo. Um, you don't want, you do not want a book, my friend. You want a coach. You want a program that's going to hold your hand and be there for you as you're learning to adjust to life with your dog. All right. Especially if you still have any cats. And so recallers is where I would go first. If that's not possible, homeschool the dog and create games online. Those are the two. All right. Uh, do you use them in the fields? I like to walk in the woods, but I have to be mindful of not getting my puppy tangled. Um, so my leash never touches the ground. My nine foot leash wraps around my neck and my puppy is walking in reinforcement zone and I'm feeding them. So I don't use long lines myself that, um, the dog goes out and drags things around. I see in TikTok. It's very popular though. Yes. Use the Susan Garrett told me as often as you like. Not a problem. If you don't do agility is 360 for active dog, active with three dogs, volunteer raising guide dogs and puppies. Margaret, have you done recallers? Um, we do have people in handling 360 that don't have any desire to do agility, but it is obviously an agility handling program where we're teaching your dog um, to respond to verbal cues. So there's a lot in there for, for people who don't have an interest in dog agility, but I would start first with recallers for sure, Margaret. And if you've already done recallers, then, um, I would, then I would say, try it for the two weeks and decide. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, you gave me two more. What program for a four month old that resource guards against me recallers. Um, and there's a, uh, if you go to uh, shapedbydog.com forward slash 66. That's a podcast about resource guarding. That should help you. But you have a four month old. I, I can't, I, I can't tell you the difference it will make in your life and in your puppy's life two weeks from now two months from now, six months from now, one year from now, if you join recallers. I, it's, I, it definitely is going to be life altering for you. Um, just got my four month old rescue. What program to stop him from barking in the crate? As you heard, anytime new dog, new puppy, new rescue, 100% it's recallers. 100%. If for whatever reason that's not possible for you, then I would encourage you to look at Crate Games Online and Homeschool the Dog Bundle with Wag Nation. Okay. Nuno, I would like you to contact our team. 
if you feel that you just didn't train yourself to get to to do to play the games because there is a there we need to we need to find out the reason why for sure all right and and we would love to have you back as an alumni and see if we can't change that wow so Marie said her, her dog's temp, which is our body language, has changed inside and outside of the house. Didn't know what we didn't know. So Anne, I suggest that you join recallers. That's what I said for sure, for sure. New puppy, 61 years old. It's been a very long time since you've had a puppy. 100% join recallers. And like I, I said, you have a two-week guarantee. We give you a two-week guarantee. Um, Karen, welcome to recallers. Um, yes, and you still have three cats? Okay, girl, you get yourself in recallers. And start ta start talking right now because we need to help you with those cats and the and the puppy. Um, Vesta, once you get involved with recallers, you've got a few games under your belt, post about that and then go to shapemydog.com forward slash 66. Um, we still have 16 people on, but my Instagram, but guys, I might lose you because of my power on my phone. Well, you know what? I can, I can steal power from here. How do you teach your dog to walk nicely on leash? Recallers. That's where, that's where I come from. Start line training. Um, Megan, if, if your biggest problem or if you're happy with the results, the connection you have as you're handling, then you can go to recallers, right? If you, if you want to improve your handling, then definitely Handling 360 and let us help you with your start line. Is it ever too late to create tame, create train? No. Seven month old rescue? Oh my gosh, let's go right now. Does recaller use clicker training? I don't think we ever suggest anybody uses a clicker. Do we, Kim, in recallers? In, it's, it's, in recallers, I don't think there's ever a time we say use a clicker for this, is there? I don't think so. I think in Handling 360, maybe there is. But um, we use a verbal marker instead of a clicker in recallers. So I, a lot of classical conditioning happening more than um, operant in recallers. Megan, contact our team at wag at dogsat.com. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of a... So here is um, the team's address. That's our customer happiness, wag at dogsat.com. But if you go to dogsat.com forward slash celebrate and you go to the live chat, one of our coaches will be there to help you for sure. Rianne said, I've just joined recallers and I find it very helpful. I've been in do doing homeschool the dog and crate games. I find recallers to be a much more depth. I love it so far. Um, what do you do when you find yourself frustrated during training? Um, Re-listen to the beginning of this live because that is exactly what we talked about. And... And I would examine your training and say, where's the clarity and the confidence for the dog? Those are really, really important. Um, Adam, I'm not sure, but it will be on dogsat.com forward slash celebrate. So ask, or you can ask, talk, talk to somebody in live chat a little bit more. How much time does recallers take? Um, it really depends on if it's a new puppy, if it's a dog who you have to unlearn some things. So I would say to get through all the games of just recallers, probably six months. 
But then we have the cooperative care. We have the retrieve. We have the let's stop the dog from barking. We have a, a lot of things in there. Um, and we once, I think it's at the seven mar mar month mark, we get people to redo all the games again. Ah, oh, Banjo, that's awesome. Thank you. Tall drink of water in the desert of dog training. That's so kind. Um, how much time does recallers take? We encourage people the first two weeks, and that's on us. You're, we have a guaranteed program part. So the first two weeks, the lessons are a little longer because we want to help you with your dog training. Remember I talked about the doggy ADD? Um, it's a lot of dog training. So the, the, the videos are a little longer in those first two weeks. But the actual training, so you can do that at night instead of Netflixing it. You could go through this, this lesson, download your lesson. And then the next day, if you can do one five-minute session, we have so many people that have kids and, and they just can't find the time to do more than one five-minute session a day. So the progress is slower, but you're still going to see progress. But if you can find, and, and that's why I want you to build it into the regular part of the day the cookies and the lesson sheet by the coffee maker, you get one five minute or three minute training session first thing in the morning. And then you put another a cookie container on your, on your briefcase. I don't know. Does anyone use a briefcase anymore? And um, so that's a reminder as you're, you know, going out the door, I'm going to do one 60 second session. You get home, you do, an, you know, so you build it into the fabric because I, when I went to dog training school, they wanted us to practice one hour every day and you had to mark all these lessons off. I never did it. I did it the day before I went back to class, which the learning isn't going to happen doing it that way. How do I tell my neighbor the dog barking is too much? <laughs> they just moved in. Please help. Um, yeah. You've got to try and help your neighbor with their dog if they want to, but they maybe don't care. My neighbor who lives across the water and um, my bedroom backs onto the, to the water. You know what water does, right? With noise, their dog barks all night long. Uh, advice for someone interested in tr training and teaching dogs. So we have a lot of people who start their dog training business after they've come through our programs. However, we don't give you a, cert a certificate. And we do things very, very different. Very different than most people. But a lot of people's dog training business started through us. A lot of online business now are mimicking what we do. 100% uh, Rachel, would I ever recommend breaking up meals into portions to be used in training? Absolutely. The best way to utilize your meals. I would, I would give anywhere from 75 to maybe even 90% of the meals with a small dog, we'd make it a, like 90% of the meals are gone through training. And with a larger dog, you can make that like 70 or 75%. I still want to feed uh -huh. dogs with a, a bowl. And if you have a young puppy, I'll give them a lot of their breakfast right off, like maybe 30% of their breakfast just in the bowl here, have that. Now we're going to train because I don't want the dogs frantic because they're hungry before we train them. Super important. I want them to be, say, you know, like, not like, oh, I, I couldn't eat another thing, but I, I don't want them frantic. A lot of dogs will get so frantic when they're hungry, puppies in particular. Okay. I think it's time to wrap it up. So I think we've been on for more than two hours, haven't we? Um, yeah, I, I answered that one already. Thank you. Th How many of you guys have been on since the beginning of this live? Give me a heart. How many of you guys have been on for this, for this whole go? How many times a day do you feed your dogs? Uh, twice a day, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Sharon, you're welcome. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate and remember... Tonight, we close my birthday celebration. I would like to be think, uh, celebrating for like another month. <laughs> and maybe I will because I would sit with COVID for my birthday. How unfair is that? Closing tonight, 
I want the opportunity to coach you. I want to help you see a difference in your dog. Okay. I want to help you. So let me coach you over the next year. I've got a phenomenal team of coaches and you're going to get, you're going to, I just know you're going to, you're going to not believe what your dog is capable of. You're going to see your dog in a different light. I know it. I know it. Stephanie Noonan, how are you? Thank you guys. And all of you on TikTok and Instagram, your troopers staying on this long. We'll see you guys. Okay, I'm closing this one. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Swagger says, 